Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivis. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And lately, and for a long period of time now, there's been a lot of noise about what types of fat, especially the soluble fat, what types of oils, what types of soluble fat should I consume? And very heavily has been demonized the polyunsaturated fatty acids. And the polyunsaturated facet, uh, fatty acids, I agree completely, are in high concentration toxic to the human body. They are toxic to the human body. And around 1960 and 70, we began, became concerned that saturated fat was associated with cardiovascular disease. So we started to give advice to people to remove saturated fat from our diet. Well, saturated fat is the kind of fat that we typically see in animal products. So we removed that from our lives and we thought, okay, well, we've got to have some fat. Let's use and create manufactured or industrial polyunsaturated fats that are hydrolyzed out of where they exist. So they're either purely manufactured in a laboratory or they're squeezed out of nuts and seeds. And that's why we call them the seed oils. And polyunsaturated fatty acids are very high in a 6-omega fatty acid that is a pro-inflammatory fatty acid. And it's low in the 3-omega anti-inflammatory fatty acids. Like everything in the human body, everything should work in a cause and effect pattern, in a negative feedback pattern. So you should have molecules that raise the red flag that there's inflammation, but not excessively. If there's a fire in your cells, you want to know about it, but you don't want to just pull the fire alarm all the time without there being a fire. And then the three omega fatty acids are the anti-inflammatory fatty acids. So you want to raise the red flag and you want to put that red flag out. So you want to be able to have that one to one, one to three ratio of three and six omega fatty acids that typically occurs, huh? typically occurs in animal products. No animal fat is exclusive to one type of fatty acids. You got three fatty acids. You got saturated, and I'm not going into the details of this. I've got other places on this channel where you can see that. But you got saturated fatty acids, which are the most stable. You got monounsaturated fatty acids that are also very stable. And then you got the polyunsaturated fatty acids. And the bizarre part is the three and six omega fatty acids are both polyunsaturated fatty acids. And the only essential fatty acids that the human body can't make. Think about that. Okay? So we need to take those in and we need to take them in in the appropriate proportion and the appropriate quantity. In the modern American diet, the ratio of 6 to 3 is very high favoring the 6, about a 1 to 30. And you want that ratio to be about a 1 to 1, 1 to 2, 1 to 3. Okay? So let's circle back to the seed oils. The seed oils are very rich in 6 and very low in 3. Animal products include saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated fatty acids in different proportions depending on if you're eating fatty fish, which are higher in the three omega fatty acids, uh, versus beef, which is higher in saturated fat, lamb, which is high in saturated fat, but you get all three. That's why it is, is an extremely healthy fat. And, and folks, remember that fatty acids, fat does not damage blood vessels. That is a misconception that is still believed by many doctors. So that the adequate ratio of fat is important in our health. And the best place to get healthy fat from is from animal products, from animal products that we eat. Now, the seed oils are the most harmful ones, the most toxic ones, including your canolas and your Criscos and the manufactured fatty acids, but they include poppy seed and all the seed oils the safflower and the uh, um, cotton seed and the um, uh, uh, different seed oils that are heated up and extracted from seeds. And here's a paradox, folks. Sunflower seeds and all the nuts are actually very healthy when you eat them. The fat in those nuts is very healthy. But we transform the type of fat when we heat it up to extract it from the, uh, uh, from the seeds. So the seed oils are harmful, while the seeds themselves, the nuts and seeds, are actually very healthy. Pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, very, very healthy to eat. I have no problem with them. In fact, they are part of a ketogenic diet in a very healthy way, as are tree nuts.
nuts that grow on trees as opposed to peanuts, which are actually a legume, like peas. Okay, so the seed oils particularly are a problem. We're going to come back to that in a second. The healthy fats from the animal kingdom are the fat that the animal carries with it, but the healthiest of the fats are the small fish fats, the high, the very fatty fish, krill, fish oil, cod liver oil, salmon, those kinds of fish are the healthiest fish to eat in terms of their fat content. But the skin of the chicken is healthy. Dairy is very healthy, especially high fat dairy. Butter is a dairy product. Heavy cream is a dairy product. Those fats are very healthy. But in the old days, when we got concerned about saturated fat, we replaced butter with margarine. But your tallow, your lard, um, your butter, very, very healthy sources of fat. But anything in excess can be harmful. I'm going to come back to that in a second. Your, the oils that get pressed get squeezed out of vegetables and fruits without heating them up. Very healthy. And the three common ones, or the three or four common ones, we get um, olive oil. We get avocado oil. We get um, olive, avocado, and coconut oil are the three healthiest fats that we, get, that we squeeze out of those fruits. And they're either monounsaturated or fully saturated fats. And they, while they don't comprise of all three, are the three healthiest fats to eat and cook with. Olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, butter, ghee, lard, tallow, and then the fat in animals and fish and poultry. Those are the healthy sets of fat. Okay, now here's the point. So much noise has been made about seed oils. They're so bad for you, they're so bad for you. But the reality is that's not true. In abundance, in excess, even butter can be harmful. Yes, even butter in excess can be harmful. The seed oils in excess, well, where do we get seed oils in excess? We get it in manufactured food, in baked goods, in manufactured foods. So ideally, when I'm frying an egg, when I'm frying a steak um, without any carbohydrate, when I'm frying stuff in a pan, I may use a little bit of butter, I may use a little tallow, but the reality is if I want to use a little bit of a seed oil, it is not going to cause dramatic harm or inflammation, particularly if I'm getting some of those other healthier fats, the, especially the fish oils. So do not demonize something if you use it from time to time to cook your carnivore food. Or if I've got a salad and I put a little bit of oil on there, ideally I'm going to put olive oil or coconut oil or avocado oil on my salad, on my vegetables. But even if I use a little bit of seed oil, it's not going to break the bank. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to ramp up your inflammation so high that you're going to die. But when you eat baked goods, when you eat a primarily carbohydrate diet, that's where the seed oils go through the roof. When you're doing a Big Mac and fries, there's your seed oil. When you're eating donuts, when you're eating deep fried things, that's when your seed oils come along. So throw all this crap about seed oils out of the window. I'd rather eat butter than margarine. And I'd rather you cook with olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, or animal fats. But if you have to use a little bit of seed oil here and there, it's not going to break the bank. Because on a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet, we don't eat the carbohydrate crap, the manufactured, industrial, carbohydrate shit that is laden with seed oils. We don't deep-fry stuff in batter and trap all that oil in the batter. So understand this paranoia about seed oils that is distracting people. Seed oils do not cause diabetes. Seed oils do not cause diabetes, period. It is chronic excessive carbohydrate consumption. And when you're eating a lot of manufactured carbohydrates, of course, they've got seed oils in them. And the seed oils make the, the carbohydrate shit more palatable. But if you're not eating carbohydrates, don't worry about the seed oils. And therefore, I would advocate for you to care about and worry about and not eat carbohydrates of any kind. 
whether they contain seed oils or not. And then you don't have to worry about seed oils. That's obvious. And yet the internet is full of these worry mongers. And I know I'm going to get a lot of responses to this, and I welcome the responses. But tell me where in your diet that does not contain carbohydrates. Tell me in your diet that does not contain carbohydrates, where the hell are you getting this abundance of seed oils? I don't have it in my own diet. Yes, I've made the choice to be mostly uh, those uh, uh, squeezed or pressed oils and the saturated fats. But none of the seed oils that I get in my food from time to time is ever going to harm me because I use them minimalistically in my ketogenic diet. There is no room for an abundance of oil. Now, I'll tell you this, that the harm of a stick of butter every day over time can be greater than any other form of those oils. It's about the amount. Let's argue. Let's fight this out. Stay carb-free, folks, and you will stay seed oil-free. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. My job is to make you think. And if you like what I said or you hate what I said, leave a comment, but don't be an asshole. Be thoughtful in your comments, whether they are supportive or antagonistic to what I've just said. Don't knee-jerk. Don't be a troll. Thank you. And if you want to hear more, follow this channel, subscribe to the channel. If what I've said offends you so much, guess what? Unsubscribe. But if you unsubscribe, I'm not going to be able to make you think. And if you want to consult, if you need help with what we're talking about, give us a shout, 561-517-0642. Text, WhatsApp, or call. Leave a message. We'll set up a visit. Thank you for watching this channel. I appreciate it. And if you appreciate it, throw me a buck or three at my Patreon account. Take care.